Welcome to the Creative Obsession Podcast. My name is Carrie, and I am coming to you from just outside of Portland, Oregon. Uh, this is episode 33. Today is May 11th, 2017, and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you're new or if you're a returning viewer, thank you for being here. I appreciate the fact that you uh, stop by and watch and see what I'm up to in my little corner of the world. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry and an Etsy shop. I will put all the information up on the screen so that you can find it. Uh, anything that I talk about that has a link that I know of, uh, I will put in the notes below this video on YouTube. Uh, so that way if I talk about a pattern or a website or something, uh, you can just click on it and find it. If that's not helpful to you, if nobody's actually using that, um, I'll stop doing it because it's a lot of time to put that all down there and get all the links. So um, if, if you do like to have that, let me know because then I'll keep doing it. If it's not a big deal and you don't really care if it's down there, then um, let me know that too, I guess, <laughs> um, because I don't need to continue doing it if nobody's using it but me and I know where the stuff is. So anyway, here we are uh, and we have had some glorious springtime warm weather here in the Pacific Northwest lately, which has been so nice. And today it's raining and kind of a little bit windy, which I'm okay with today because as soon as the weather warmed up, um, my allergies kicked in and I've just been sneezing my full head off, even taking allergy pills. So I took an allergy pill this morning. Um, so far I feel like I'm okay. So hopefully I don't get the sneezies. Um, with the rain, it kind of knocks the pollen down a little bit and, um, I'm hoping that helps with the allergies but having the sunny days and the warmer weather was just so glorious uh, we got our bikes all cleaned up and tires pumped up and went for a nice bike ride which we plan on doing more of in as the weather uh, continues to clear up um, we don't usually go very far we just uh, we have this loop that we like to do from here and it kind of loops around through um, farmland and if we do that and come all the way back here, it's about a 12 mile uh, bike ride. And that's just really nice. Not a lot of traffic. It's relatively flat. It goes through farmland, which is really pretty. So we hope to get back to doing that because um, it was really fun. So now I, if you saw on Instagram, I posted a picture of us with Millie and her little basket in the back. And she just loves riding in that. Um, so I'm going to try and concoct a, um, like a shade for her. So she's in a milk crate, plastic milk crate type box that is bolted to the back of my bike. And, um, being that she's black and there's no shade, she's not really getting much wind cause I'm blocking the wind for her when it's a warm summer day. Um, she gets really hot. So I'm thinking of taking, uh, some PVC pipe and put, um, attaching it in the corners of that and then making a little sunshade on the top. So <laughs> she's gonna look like a little princess back there, but at least she won't be in the blasting sun and hopefully it doesn't freak her out. <laughs> so I'm gonna try it. That's my next craft project. <laughs> I think that I'm gonna try and work on and see if it works. If not, then she'll just ride the way she's riding. Um, I don't have a lot of finished objects in this episode. I have a couple of whips that I wanna show you, but I was also busy making a craft project that I'll talk about in a little bit for Mother's Day. So to begin the full fledge of the episode, I like to talk about the quilt that's on the wall. Well, today I'm in a different spot. I'm in front of my sewing machine because the quilt's pretty small and it would just get lost on that big wall. It's just kind of balancing on the knobs of my cabinet. So hopefully it stays and it doesn't fall off because it'll scare the bejeebers out of me. But this is a quilt that I made back in 2011. I took a workshop with Susan Carlson and she's known for um, doing collage type quilts. And so um, myself and another gal that, uh, that I met through quilting, we took a workshop in Sisters, Oregon, which is one of my favorite places. So it was cool. And we kind of got, we learned how to uh, approach this type of quilt. So what that is, is it's made up of a gazillion little pieces that were cut out of fabrics to get a certain shade or a certain shape or whatever to, um, to, to create the animal or whatever it is that you're creating. So I, uh, what you start with is a piece of muslin. I just drew out a butterfly shape 
with a marker on the muslin and then you just start filling in with your different bits and pieces of fabric. So I had been collecting fabrics knowing I wanted to do this and you just need little bits. So I have tubs and tubs of little bits in all different colors because I want to do more of this and I just haven't I just haven't done it because you have to kind of make a big mess. You really got to get spread out and if you've been watching for a while, you know that I just run through things pretty quickly and I'll pick it up again and it'll be something I do again. But this was really fun to do. Um, I, you know, like I said, I built up with a lot of different kinds of fabrics like this orange fabric in here. Those are actually carrots. Um, I had collected fabric to do a jar quilt and I was going to do, and it's what it, a jar quilt is, is the piecing looks like little jars on a shelf and I was going to do all kinds of fruits and vegetables and and foods and things like that in the little jars and so I had started to collect that kind of fabric well I, I, there was no point in me making it because uh, my taste changed what am I going to do with a jar quilt <laughs> nobody else is going to want it so I used that fabric and it gave the illusion of kind of like stripes in that area but they're actually carrots so you know cutting out like that shape that's a flower I better not touch it it's liable to fall off <laughs> So um, you just sit there and you glue it with um, tacky glue and you just take a little piece of glue on your finger and you put it on the back of the fabric and stick it all on and when it's all done the way you want it to look then you quilt over the top of it and that actually sews all those piece, pieces down. So I had done the butterfly shape and then I cut that shape out so that, that the extra uh, layer was just behind the butterfly stuck it down quilted over the top of it and that's what you've got um, I love it I would like to make another one it was really fun to do but like I said um, it, it creates a mess because you have to have so much fabric pieces out because you, you're auditioning a lot of different ones like is this going to give me the lightness and darkness that I need um, is it going to make give the illusion of the stripe that I need but if you want to see some really amazing work you should look up Susan Carlson um, because she just does phenomenal work. One of her pieces, I think that's my all-time favorite, is she did a 22 foot long, I think it was 22, 20 or 22 foot long crocodile called Stevie. And um, it's, it's huge. And it's all done in this technique and it is amazing absolutely amazing so I will put a link down below because I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head what her website is probably susancarlson.com but I'll put that down below and I, and I highly recommend you take a look she was a really not good teacher and a nice teacher and I was really glad that I did it I had a wonderful weekend in sisters and um, so this holds memories of that as well as just uh, getting a chance to do the quilt uh, so yeah so that's my butterfly. That's the story behind it. And um, I hope it just stays up there for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> I want to uh, talk about or just remind everybody we've got the springtime single skein shawl knit along that I'm co-hosting with Tracy from Thimble and Thread Make. Um, I have not touched my shawl, I'm sorry to say. I've really been working on the crocheted blanket that I'll kind of touch on here in a little bit. So I haven't been, I haven't even touched my shawl. I may have touched it. I may have done a row. <laughs> That's not been what I've been grabbing to work on. So um, hopefully you guys are still working on them and getting them done. There's been several entries in the FO thread in the Ravelry group. And um, I'm going to extend it. It was supposed to go to May 15th, but um, because I'm recording today and I won't record again until a couple of weeks, I'm going to extend it. So you guys get a few extra days. So I'm going to extend it to May 22nd because then I'll record like the 23rd or 24th. And so uh, I will close the thread that day. So finish up your, your shawls if you've got them. We've got a lot of great prizes, which I've listed uh, at the beginning of that thread. And um, yeah, it's been really fun and, and I appreciate everybody who has participated. I'm sorry I haven't been better about it. My shawl's probably halfway done. Um, the shawl's been a nice knit, but it's not a fast knit. So um, it's just taking me a little longer. And then with me really pushing to get this blanket done, I've been really having to put my efforts there. I haven't even been really knitting on my socks. So 
that shows you where that's where my head's been, <laughs> where my head space has been. So um, I did get another donation. I'm not going to use it for this cow because I've got plenty of prizes for it, but I'm going to save it. But I want to show you, um, I was sent from the Naughty Knitwits. They sent me a donation of Legacy Fiber Arts. Uh, this is called Winterfell, and it's part of their Skein of Thrones yarn of the month, I think. And um, so it's a real pretty gray with speckles of pink and gr mint green in it. And so they donated that, which was really generous because Legacy Fiber Arts uh, yarn sells out very quickly. And so to be able to get one is kind of hard to do. So I'm going to hang on to this. We're going to give this away uh, in a future episode. But thank you, Naughty Knitwits, for the donation. It was really uh, a surprise and a, a really nice surprise. So uh, let's go into the blanket. So I am going to talk about my trust blanket. So it's the crocheted blanket I've been working on for quite some time actually. That is knitted in blocks like this and you knit bobbles and you use those bobbles to make words. And so I am almost done with all the blocks. I think I need to make four of this size in the dark blue, in the denim blue, the denim blue color. Um, when I had bought the yarn, and this is done in uh, Knit Picks Brava Worsted, and so when I, um, you know, calculated how much yarn I was going to use based on, uh, I think, yardage and stuff that of the, what the pattern called for, I, uh, you know, figured out all the colors I needed, and then I I thought I bought, I'm pretty sure I did, bought an extra skein in each color, just in case. Well, I'm on my last skein of that dark blue, and this block takes 26 grams, and I need four of them, and each skein is only 100 grams, so I'm going to be a few grams short. So what I'm hoping, oh, I don't think I brought it. Did I not bring it? I did. I thought I'd put it here somewhere. Oh, goodness gracious. Maybe it's in here. Sorry. What I'm going to be able to do, I hope, is I have these bits left over from the previous blocks. And so I think my last block is going to have to be like almost to the end. And then I'm going to have to add these. And then I'm out of that color. So um, I'm, I'm really, really close. Four of these blocks won't take me very long. Um, I can do one in an evening um, if I have a chance to create during the day, like, you know, just sitting and crochet during the day, I can get more done in a day. But four of these left, and then I'm going to start putting it together. So um, one of the thoughts I had when I first got it is the 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 afghan is only a 50 by 58 which really isn't very big especially for an adult and so i thought well i can always make it longer by adding more blocks either to the top or the bottom or however i want to do it thinking i had extra yarn well i don't have a lot left i've got a skein of white i think a skein of the cream and i've got several skeins of this for some reason i have extra of this um so, because I've got the skein of grays that I have is going to need to be used to sew it all together and to do a border. So, I don't know that I really have enough to make it bigger. But the way that, one way I thought of making it bigger is um, instead of just, you know, adding, making lots of these little things and adding them on, I thought, what if I took the measurements or took the stitch count of one of the bigger blocks and I figured out a way to do their name in it. So I knew I needed graph paper to do that. And I really wanted to just do it on the computer so that I wouldn't have to erase and do all that. So I, I Google searched interactive graph paper because I wanted to be able to add on to it and, and do it on the computer, not just print out a piece of graph paper. So I ended up finding one. Um, I'll put a link to how where, where it was. It was like on a crafting website craft I don't remember and I I designed hopefully <laughs> designed for their last name so this piece will end up being as long as the longest 
piece that said Proverbs in it. So I took that, which is roughly half of the width, and then it makes it like this tall, I think. Does it make it that tall? No, it makes it like this tall by, you know, wide. So that would add that much more, which is what? Let me measure here on my thing. So it's like an eight inch, eight and a half inches to the length of it. So that would bring the length to 58 by 58 by with eight plus eight inches would be 76. So that would make it long enough. So I could do it out of this color because I have a lot of this color left. Um, but then I have to figure out because this isn't going to be the whole width of the afghan, then I have to do more blocks. And if I don't have enough of the other colors, so I don't know. I, I thought what I'd do is get all this done that's supposed to be in the afghan, that's part of the pattern, sew it all together, um, and then kind of see where I'm at. So I kind of started to do that. So I, I laid out the first couple of rows because I'm still needing to make a few more of these. Um, I've never done this before, so I am kind of winging it. Um, I, it says to just sing, put, the, put it like popcorn sides together and then you single crochet just picking up the stitches. So I decided to do it in the gray because it's sort of a neutral color and I know when you quilt um, you generally quilt with a gray thread when you're uh, piecing your quilts because you've got lots of different colors going together. You don't normally match your thread color unless you're doing, um, say you're doing like neat, lots of different navy blues. So well, you wouldn't use navy blue thread for that because you wouldn't want a lighter color thread to pop through in case you could see the stitches. But generally you, you piece quilts with gray thread. So I thought, let me use the gray. Well, it's more of a silver gray and um, let me get this turned around. So this is what I've put together so far. So I've got, this is the word trust. And then you just have these decorative blocks, filler blocks. You can see the gray in there. Can you see the stitches? Which I wasn't, didn't know you were gonna see. And I don't really know how else to do it. You definitely see it on the back. And I thought, is that gonna bug me that you see it on the back? Cause here's the back doesn't look too bad when you've got the white, but um, you know, when it's the two darker colors, which these are the two darkest colors together, it could look okay. Once it's all done, it will just look like a grid and that could just look fine. Um, I don't know how else to do it where you're not going to see that. So um, that's as far as I got. I think I might YouTube and see if I can find other instructions. But um, if not, that's just going to be how it looks. Because honestly, somebody asked me at knit night, she thought, oh, they must really be, you know, like knit worthy or crochet worthy. And I'm like, actually, they're not. <laughs> I hate to say that, but they're not. They're not. It's a friend of mine's son that's getting married, um, you know, and I, I know their son and, and we have done stuff with them, but we're not close. And it wasn't because of that that I made it. I really wanted to try to, I was really excited about this pattern or just not particularly the saying or anything, but just the fact that you're putting words on something and the fact that this only cost me maybe 30 bucks and it was for the joy of making it. And so I thought, okay, you know, it's cause I really wanted to make this and I'm excited to give them something really special. That makes me feel really happy. Whether they let their dog sleep on it, I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't control what happens to it. It could get trashed in a day. I don't know, but I'm making it anyway. And so then I think, I, am I overthinking it and trying to make it too complicated by adding their name to it? I don't know. But if I can make a little bit, make it a little bit longer, I, th I think I would feel a little better about it. So once I get all the blocks put together, and finish it up to where I know that that's as big as I'm going to make it. However it is, I approach that. Then I have to do a crochet border around, around the border. Uh, so I need to make sure I have enough yarn to do that. And one of the reasons why I chose this yarn, for one, it was inexpensive. It's something that they don't, there's no special washing instructions. Just throw it in the wash if you need to. And um, I thought, well, I can always get more. If I run out of a color, I can always get more. Well, the colors that I would need if I were to purchase more 
would be this color um, and probably the gray. So I got on Knit Picks. I thought maybe I'll just order a skein or a couple skeins just in case. <laughs> They're back ordered. They're back ordered until June 9th. The wedding is May 25th or something like that. <laughs> Seriously. So I may have to just make do with what I have. Um, being that it's just an acrylic yarn, I could always just go get some like Red Heart or something and do a border in that. Um, I would want to do the blocks all out of the same just so that was cohesive throughout the whole thing, but I can always add a, um, a different border, I mean, out of a different yarn. So we'll see. So I'm, I'm at the stage of putting it together. Like I said, I'm going to check um, to make sure I'm doing it right because I don't know. There's no instructions for how to do it. Just says single crochet them together. So that's what I'm doing, and I think that's just how it looks. So uh, stay tuned. I'm hoping to... Um, record my next episode right before the wedding so that it, when it's finished um, I can show you. I had also when I first started doing it thought well if it's not done by the wedding that's okay I can always send it to them and I thought you know I'm not gonna see them they're not people I see often and I don't want to have to mail it and deal with all that and have it be sent to their apartment and you know so I'm really trying to get it finished just to be finished with it. I got started on my Sunshine Coast sweater. I had shown um, my whole swatching situation last episode, and so I went ahead and cast it on, and I'm just gonna go for it, and um, got started. So I am just at the yoke stage still, um, so it doesn't look like much, but I'm enjoying it. I'm getting into the groove a little bit better. It took a little bit of time because there's a lot of markers, and I'm not used to, knitting anything that that has so many different sections so one thing I did do is because in the directions it'll say you know when you get to marker one and when you get to marker two do this and so on I have to count where my markers are so I definitely I have a good marker here that's marking the beginning of the round and then I put orange which starts with O which one also starts with O so that's one I know is one <laughs> And then I know, so when I can look at it to see what marker I'm on, I can count from the orange. So anyway, um, going along really smoothly. Like I said, I've been mostly working on the blanket, so I haven't uh, gotten too far. I'm still doing the repeats and, and all that that's making the yoke. So, uh, so far so good. My only problem is, um, and this is uh, something that I'm curious about, and what people use to count to keep track of where you are. I have an app on my phone that I use because I always have my phone with me. And so if I'm knitting, wherever I'm knitting, I will always have my counter. And the one that I use is called Knit Tink. And um, it is, so I can keep, oh, you're probably not gonna see. Anyway, I can keep um, different projects all in the row, all in there and I so whatever project I'm on I just click on that and it pulls that up and I can keep count of, of row counts and repeats and stitch counts and whatever so I've used that for a few years and I've been really happy with it um, another one that I had heard of and I kind of looked into it a little bit um, and then I, I thought yeah no but when I was at knit night Lucy was telling me about um, knit companion and with that one, it can link to your Ravelry page. So if you're pulling up a pattern, it actually pulls up the pattern sheet. So when I pull up my, my sweater, it's going to actually pull up this. And so that's really cool. And you can highlight the, the different rows that you're on and do a little slider and blah, blah, blah. It's $10 a year as a subscription. I thought, you know, I'll try it for a year. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've wasted $10 in worse situations than that. So I figure I'm good for trying this for a year. So I went ahead and got it and, and I downloaded my pattern and everything. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. You know, I can keep track. And, but oftentimes when I'm knitting, I'm wanting to, and I, so, okay. So back up a little bit. I installed it on my tablet because at the time my phone just couldn't handle, um, any, to put any more, it didn't have enough memory to run another app like that. 
and um, I didn't want to tie up my phone with that plus my tablets bigger and bigger is always better when you're trying to read directions so I thought let me put it on my on my uh, tablet well that was all fine and good but if I want to watch something on my tablet like a podcast or something like that I can't because I'm doing my pattern <laughs> so I thought well shoot that's not gonna work and uh, I can watch that kind of stuff on TV but if Jim's wanting to watch something stupid <laughs> that I don't want to watch I'll just put in my headphones and watch something on my tablet and go in off into my little world and be happy as a clam. So, um, so I have it on my tablet and I thought that's just not going to work. Let me go back to the knit tink pattern and that that works. That's always worked for me. Um, I think I, I will probably switch back and forth, but for now that worked. Well, yesterday I got a new phone. So I had the Samsung 5, which was great, but it was starting to get really, really slow and just not working at its best. And I thought, okay, it's time to get a new phone. So I just got the Samsung 8. We transferred all the stuff. They did their little thing where they had to touch each other and they're, they're mating and doing their little thing. And I had to check, you know, the guy was helping me and check the stuff that you wanted, that information to switch over. It all switched over, it clicked on the knit tink. Oh gosh, I can't lose that. Well, for some reason, it didn't keep track of where I was <laughs> on the sweater. So I'm doing these repeats, like you do these two rows 28 times. And I'm like, how many times have I done it? I don't know. It was in my thing. So I looked on my old phone and for some reason the information wasn't there. I don't know. I, so I think I'm on the 11th. I think I'm like 11 repeats into the 28. I don't really know how I can tell. I think when I get to 28, it may give me a stitch count. Like you should have so many neck stitches and sleeve stitches and all that. So aside from switching my phone over and, and possibly <laughs> losing that information, that's been a really good uh, thing. So I thought, well, if there's something different out there that you like that's easy to use, I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. It's got to be something I can just pull up, have it work for me, and, um, and, and I'm fine. I'm fine with the Knit Tink one. I paid like a couple bucks, I think, way back when just so that I didn't have ads, and it's been well worth it. It's, it has worked perfectly fine for me for everything that I've been doing thus far. And I can have just, like I said, a ton of projects in there. So that brings, you know, made me think of, I wonder if there's something else out there, <laughs> but um, I'll get it back on track. Everything else was fine. It was just for the sweater. I can't exactly remember how many repeats. I'll figure it out. It's not gonna be the end of the world, um, but yeah. I do like my new phone, by the way. <laughs> It is really good. The camera is really good. I'm even considering recording the podcast with the camera uh, just for ease of uh, showing you things because with the camera I use now, it's my Canon and it auto focuses, but it's a fixed focus. So if I've got it focused on me, but I can't, it won't continually focus. So if I go closer, it's not going to follow that. So I thought maybe I'll do it with my phone. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So that, um, my vanilla socks haven't gotten very far. My shawl, I'm looking at my notes here. My shawl for the cow, I haven't gotten very far. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I did get some new things though, and some new things are very exciting to me. So I um, follow Rosehaven Yarn Shop that um, they're out of Ontario, Canada. And she has these blankety blanks. So there's sock blanks that are so cute. And look at this one. So it's all, oops, sorry. It's all um, little trailers that she has dyed. So uh, this is 80, an 80-20 superwash nylon, fingering weight 135 yards, 115 grams. So I love an 80-20 because I just feel like it's nice and soft and it's a little plumper and I like that. So uh, I'm gonna knit some socks with this and I'm gonna do it when I go camping. Um, we're going camping next week. Probably won't be on that trip, but uh, in June and into July, we're gonna be taking a long trip to Yellowstone. So I thought that might be a good project is to do this on, when we go to Yellowstone. And then um, I should have about a third of the blank Left over, and so what I thought I would do, I saw Andy from Andre Sue Knits 
um, she does beautiful sock blanks herself and she had taken one of her sock blanks and um, picked up stitches along the edge and knitted a little bit knitted it taller and uh, made a pillow out of it and I thought wouldn't that be a cute pillow in my trailer <laughs> so um, really really happy with this so so adorable Leslie was just a doll to work with um, she had posted that she had these on uh, Instagram and that she was going to a show and I thought oh gosh I would love to get my hands on one but I knew she was going to the show and she was like fine you know just give me a call and and we'll take care of you and she did so Leslie was super cool to work with she's got adorable other sock planks and stuff um, she has a yarn shop in Ontario which I won't be going to but I uh, would definitely buy blanks from her again so I also purchased let me look for her card oh Cridola where is it where'd it go I don't know sorry I wanted to make sure I got the information right so I purchased a skein of yarn from Hannah made it she's on Etsy and look at that this is called Your Purple is Showing. It's an 85 Superwash Merino 15% nylon. And it is, I don't know how many yarns it is. Doesn't say it. But it's probably what's typical. You have get 400 and some yards. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I'm going to put it with some something I'm pretty sure. Um, it's very soft. It is a thinner, a little bit of a thinner yarn. So um, it's probably got quite a bit of yardage on it. But it doesn't say on her card. I just realized that. Anyway, so yeah, very pretty. Your purple is showing. That's so me. And it's really bright pink and really lightly speckled. and Very pretty. So I was happy with that to purchase. Uh, I talked when I first started about a craft project that I uh, did and um, I made some things for Mother's Day. So I've already given my mom hers, but I made another one for Jim's mom, a little bit different. And we're going to get together with his family and we're going to um, a family member's house who just moved. And so we're gonna, it's, I got made one as a housewarming as well. So what I did... Excuse me, just a second. As I painted flower pots. So this is just a terracotta flower pot and I uh, spray painted it with primer and then I spray painted it after that dried with black on this particular one. And then I just took my craft paint, my acrylic craft paints that some of them weren't any good because I haven't used them in a really long time, um, but managed to get most of them to work. And then I just used the end, the uh, handle end of the paintbrush and just made dots and just uh, just did a dotted design all around it. And I, I love it. I think it looks kind of um, mosaic almost. So, and then I painted the inside rim, which you figure your dirt's gonna go pretty close to the top, but I wanted that color to kind of show. And once I was all done with it, I just clear coated it and um, covered it with clear coat. So I also painted the little dishes that they sit in so that it matched. I love it. <laughs> Let me put that one there. Um, I'll put a picture in of my mom's that I did. So what I did is I got these solar lights at the store. So I don't know if that'll do it because you can kind of see the lights on. Um, they charge in the light and then when it gets dark they turn on. And so I, I Put it in the middle of the pot and then planted flowers around it which i'm going to do with this one and then i tried so i'm not a painter i really don't know how to paint but um i like to play with it so <laughs> this is the one that i'm giving as a housewarming uh, my attempt at a flower <laughs> so like i said i'm not a painter but i figured it's a flower pot what difference does it make so I just painted a giant like pinkish daisy and a, I don't know, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> because my edges weren't super perfect, I, on this one I went over, I just painted a black line and then did white dots over it to kind of uh, camouflage <laughs> the lack of being perfect. So this one's painted a dark purple and I did a lavender on the inside and then it has a purple base for that. So I, I'm going to fill them with flowers and um, 
they will both be gifts to give. Um, super fun to do. I, I think I might um, do one for myself because it was really fun to do. I really enjoyed the dotted one. Um, let me put a picture in here of the one I gave my mom. Uh, I met up with my mom yesterday and we spent the afternoon together and I gave her hers and I really, really liked the way hers turned out. Um, it was just, it's kind of therapeutic. You're just, especially with the dots because they don't have to look like anything. And um, yeah, so it was good. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw something my mom and I did yesterday. I took her to a park that was new to me and new to her, thankfully, because a lot of times I will be like, hey, mom, you want to go do this? And she's like, oh, yeah, I've already done that. So she had never heard of this park. It's a nature park in Hillsboro. Um, and it had, I heard following a friend on Instagram showed a picture of it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, where is this park? I need to go to it. Find out it's like not that far from my mom's house. And it has these wooden, not wood, well, they are wood. They're sculpt, head sculptures that are in the trees and they're made with willow branches. And it was just so cool to see. And so we were just, we're taking pictures and I'm not good at selfies, trying to take a selfie and doing all that. And then all of a sudden, all these kids come because this park is right next to a school. And so I think they kind of came as a little field trip. And they're all running in and out of these heads and just giggling and running. It was so fun and it was just so neat. It was just neat to do something so different and see something so different. And I thought, kudos to the city or whoever thought of putting that in a park because I think that's important for kids to see art and to allow it to be something that they can climb on and touch. These things were super solid, um, just very odd and clever and fun and so mom and I had a really nice afternoon doing that but uh, my son had a birthday and he doesn't like a fuss made he doesn't like it when people fuss over him so he uh, we don't he doesn't like when I have a party or anything like that but we took him out kayaking we hadn't been kayaking in several years we have our own kayaks and um, so we took them out it was super awesome because the water is so high from all the rain we've had that you're kayaking in areas that are normally uh, land. And so we were able to get pretty far in the bay and, um, and it's a bay off of the Columbia River. So the Columbia River is the main river that separates Oregon and Washington. It's a big river. Um, that's a little hard to kayak in because the current's pretty strong and you gotta watch out for barges and boats. And, but we just tootled around in the bay. Uh, my son's fiance hadn't ever kayak kayaked before so we wanted to keep it easy and we, we kayaked for several hours and you know it was just it's just a lot of fun and we got we would like go through the trees and we thought you know what <laughs> you're not normally able to go through this this is normally like an island so uh just spent a glorious day it was just so nice um and so he had a good birthday which was nice to be able to do and so we plan on doing that more often too i even made some camping plans in july where we're going to camp along a lake so we can take the kayaks and go camping and and do all that kind of stuff so uh anyway that's about all i have i am going to show a couple of things that i have new in my shop and uh, so if you're not interested in that then you can uh, say goodbye now and thank you so much for watching and if you're curious to what i've got just recently put in my shop then stick around okay i wanted to show you some of the new colors that are available in my shop i wanted to get some mostly solids so i'm calling them tonals because they're not like a complete solid color but you have not a cloud in the sky cotton candy spearmint kind of going with the food theme there it sounds like you are my sunshine it's a real soft buttery yellow color sunshiny yellow I should say crush like the drink uh, this is a fun let me put these down Ugh, this is a fun one this is wake me up before you go go because it reminded me of the 80s and you got to have wham with the 80s and wake me up so that was a fun one um, I brought back delphinium i uh, done a little bit different than I had done it in the past. I haven't had that in my shop for a while, but um, got delphinium, not delphinium, yeah, delphinium. Uh, and berry cobbler, which is berry colors, blueberries, red berries. So those are new in the shop. Oh, and then I've got some mini skein sets. This is my warm and cozy set. So we've got navy, purple, teal, green, and orange. 
uh, this would be a really pretty set to put together in a garment or as a, add as accents or even to use as heels and toes for socks. Um, I'm gonna, my plan is to do a couple different sets to have one that's got some brights in it and have maybe some, some um, pastels, but I just, I haven't had time to be dying more recently this week and probably won't die until I get done with camping. So when I do, I'm gonna get some more mini sets in the shop and um, yeah. So thank you to everybody who has supported my shop. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, so I will be going camping. I'm gonna take some pictures and videos of that hopefully. Uh, it's, I'm going over to Central Oregon, which is where I tried to record, if you remember back, episode nine, I think, maybe ten, something like that. I tried recording from camping and it was just too hard. It's just too, it's just too weird to, to talk to a camera when people are walking by. I'm not going to do that again, but I'm hoping to get some footage. I don't know what we're going to be able to do because I don't think the weather's supposed to be super wonderful. Um, so hopefully we get to do something, but my plan is while we're there to finish up that crochet blanket and, um, be done with it. So hopefully I'll have that as a finished object to show you next time. Have a fabulous next couple of weeks. Have a good Mother's Day, which is coming up on Sunday, and I will talk with you all again in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.